and welcome back to redirecting now I'm going to be playing some audio uh, to a video that is on YouTube that is very very suspect and interesting at the same time uh, but those of you who are paying attention to uh, what's going on on the continent of Africa you're going to find this to be very interesting but uh, many of us are not fooled by the language that you're going to hear in this video uh, the video is entitled Russia and China investments in Africa pose new threats to the US <laughs> so already when I hear that I say to myself pose new threats no they're always using words like threat to uh, put it in your mind or put an image in your mind that someone is an imminent threat or that some someone is seeking to hurt uh, the population of the US in which most of the time it has nothing to do with that there is no harm or threat to anyone but it's usually just a threat to their ego uh, their power or someone who is trying to reach further than they've reached um, to gain world domination. Now, right now, they are at the top, right? But they can't stand the thought of anyone else trying to take that spot. So I'm going to go ahead and roll some of this audio and um, pay very close attention to what these people are saying because, again, in my opinion, it sounds like they are keeping and i might cut in from time to time to to expound on some things but it sounds like the people of africa to them are of no consequence it's like they want to make all of these deals with uh, those who are kind of sort of in charge in africa they want to make the deals with them um, not necessarily that they respect them but they know that they have to go through those channels once they establish these deals with these African leaders uh, they have no concern whatsoever for the people I can guarantee you that but anyway listen to the language in this video and I'm going to interject in and out they are deliberately and aggressively targeting their investments in the region to gain a comp competitive advantage over the United States should this Okay, they're deliberately and aggressively. <laughs> okay, my goodness. Hear the wording. You see how they're using deliberately and aggressively, almost as if they're some type of um, real threat or attack against the U.S., but we're, we're talking about uh, strategic business planning and um, movement on the continent, but they feel threatened by it. But anyway, let me continue. This occur the balance of power in the Horn of Africa, astride major arteries of maritime trade between Europe, the Middle East, and South Asia would shift in favor of China. Okay, so right now, I guess they feel like it's in their favor, but oh, if they continue in this, this method of um, doing business, it's going to shift in favor of China. So they can't stand the idea or the thought of the shifting of power. So they feel some kind of way right now. This is why they said, poses new threats to the U.S. because they feel like there's a shift in power. Okay, but notice there's no talk of the people of Africa. This is all about business strategy and movement in places. Uh, I'm sorry, in placement, almost like they're playing a game of chess. Like someone said in the comment section, look, so-called black people, they play checkers while the rest of the world, they are playing chess strategic takedown moves so i'm going to go ahead and continue the rest of the video and again i will interject national security advisor john bolton sounding a new alarm on china and russia's quiet but massive investments encroaching on the african continent okay sounding the alarm on massive quiet backdoor investments on the continent of Africa. Stop. I want to insert this into this portion of the video right here. She also said encroaching, okay? And so I want to read the definition of encroaching for those of you who don't understand it so that you can see how hypocritical these people are and how simply laughable this is. Encroachment is to intrude on a person's territory or rights. So it is their belief that China is encroaching on Africa, on the continent of Africa. That is what they believe. Now explain to me what they have done for centuries. But yet they are accusing China of encroaching on the continent of Africa. That is hilarious to me because they typically accuse others of the very thing that they themselves are guilty of. 
just wanted to add that little two cents in there uh, because I didn't uh, address it initially. I wanted to add that in there. So back to my commentary. Now, the U.S., they had opportunities to do things like that, but they always like to go in and strong arm, okay? Went in strong arming and mistreating and misusing and all of this other kind of stuff. So when someone else, not saying that China is any better, but they decided that they're going to do things a little differently, right? The U.S., they went in strong arming and doing all this other kind of stuff. And unfortunately for the people of Africa, um, that continues on, but um, there is a softer approach at, initially by the Chinese, but then they revert to the same thing that the Europeans are doing, right? So I feel sorry for the people in that regard, but again, it's really not the people, it's the African leaders. But you see how these players, uh, you have uh, the West, you have Russia and you have China, um, they're all feeling like, oh, we are playing these parts and moving pieces on the continent, but um, China is taking over. So they feel like they are losing power on Africa because they already know that the power of Af Africa does not lie within the hands of the African people. They already know this, but they're feeling frustrated because China is going above and beyond what they even attempted. Okay, let's continue. As those countries plant their economic flags across the region, Bolton put a number on it saying between 2016 and 2017, China plowed $6.4 billion into Africa. Russia, for its part, is pushing its own arms and energy on the continent as it then extracts rare earth minerals and other natural resources. Oh, so Russia and China want to extract rare and natural resources? That's what they want to do? But hasn't the West already been doing that? But in their minds, they're saying... Only we should be allowed to do that. How dare Russia and China go to the continent, the richest continent on the planet, and try to extract rare and natural resources. So they're feeling some kind of way because China has planted their flags all over. Now what they have here on the screen is a map of Africa. And the yellow represents um, everywhere that China has uh, basically done enough business to where they can uh, put a, a, a flag, okay, on the map. Um, and Russia is kind of like in the center there. And the green represents both. And so pretty much this is showing that either Russia or China or both together is all over the continent of Africa. Every region of the continent, except two little, let me see, four little small gray spots, four small gray regions um, or countries, I don't see China or Russia, but the rest of it is either one, the other, or both. And so the West is getting a little bit um, concerned about that, not because, oh, the West cares for the people. Notice the people are not even involved. They're not even in this. It's the resources, whether rare or natural, the land, the opportunities, uh, the ability to uh, build infrastructure on the continent so that they can kind of um, swoop in to take over. Remember, I did a video where um, um, there was a guy who did an interview and he is estimating that China is planning on putting at least 300 million Chinese in um, Africa on the continent. Now, some of you are like, um, that's not true. You can say whatever you want to say. Again, this was just an interview that the guy did. There are already millions of Chinese there. And I said in the video, whether it's uh, 300 million, uh, 10 million, 5 million, those are large numbers. And the fact that they are swooping in, and we already know they are, and they are planning on, listen, another element are the ghost cities. There are a lot of ghost cities that China has built in Africa. So now I think we know why. They were not built for the African population. So maybe the 300 million people that they are planning, even if it's not 300 million, but it's only 30 million or 10 million or 5 million, at least now we know where they plan on tucking them. They've built these ghost cities that are not occupied right now because they are gonna need a place for their people to come so that when they take over various regions of Africa, 
they will have a place for their people to live so that they can work in their factories because it's already known and I might do a separate video on this that a lot of times when these foreign nations come into Africa initially they might hire Africans but then they get rid of them and bring their own people in and leave you as an outsider in your own land so let me continue on yet some with some more of this video under Bolton's new prosper Africa strategy the US will take on those threats by reinforcing economic ties with Africa we bring in, in a Fox Business exclusive ambassador, Michael Froman, former U.S. trade representative under President. Y'all listen to this. They want to reinforce economic ties with Africa. What do you mean reinforce? Listen, you people have been nothing but a thorn in the side of Africa. And now that you see someone else is coming in, doing a whole lot more than what you have done, now you want to try to say, look, Africa, we want to help you. Listen to some of the language that this, they're about to put forth right now as if they are there to actually help the people. They know good and well they can care less about those people. President Obama, he's also MasterCard's vice chair and strategic growth president. Ambassador, get, get to it. At first, this struck us as interesting that the national security advisor would be the guy to announce an economic plan or partnership with, with Africa. First of all, she says, get to it. <laughs> you see, that's the, that's the tone of a person or people who feel just very nervous about what they see um, Russia and China doing on the continent. They're nervous about it. They're like, get to it. Oh, oh, what is our, our game plan here? What are we planning on doing here? Let's, let's get to it. How do you see it? Well, look, I think uh, uh, this is a, uh, a positive move in that we have a great opportunity in Africa to expand trade and investment. You know, if you look back historically, back in 2000, at the end of the Clinton administration, we put in place the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which allowed exports from Africa to come into the U.S. Oh, we allowed some of their exports to come into the U.S. So he wants to reach way back to 2000. We're talking about 20 years ago. He wants to reach way back to the year 2000 when they put in place this act, the economic act or whatever the act was, um, which was a little penciled in policy or whatever. And we said, we're going to allow trade from Africa. Okay, but listen to what he says further right here. Duty free and during the- Duty free. Oh, what a huge favor. We're gonna allow it duty free. Now, let me explain something to you all. We attempted to ship some merchandise to Africa, not merchandise, let me just put it this way. Um, it was a donation to some people who lived in a certain region of Africa. We were trying to coordinate things with um, a sister who lives near the region and had contact with these people. Now, for the boxes we were sending, they, it was just, you know, just toothpaste and school supplies and... Um, um, just different little things like that, sanitary napkins, just little uh, basic things that um, we have easy access to, but they didn't because this was being sent to Zimbabwe, right? Just to send two boxes to two separate families, the rates that we were being charged were between $1,500 and $2,000. I'm sorry, $3,000. It was a very high rate just to send um, boxes of merchandise that didn't even that cost way less than uh, what they were trying to charge us to ship it. And so here you talking about duty free, like you're doing the, the people of Africa some type of favor. They always try to talk about the little things that they do for you, but they fail to um, expound on everything that they've already taken from you. Everything that they've already taken from the continent of Africa, how the people have been displaced, mistreated, misused, abused, and all of this. They don't want to talk about that stuff, but they want to talk about the little bit that they have done for you as if that's enough to uh, just completely wipe the slate clean for the things that they've already taken. Gee whiz. Here's more. The Obama administration, we focused on bringing electricity to Africa, the Power Africa Initiative, which I'm delighted that the Trump administration has continued. <laughs> Stop. These people are funny. You have to laugh to keep from crying. Okay, the Power Africa initiative that was put forth under the Obama administration, in which I'm proud to say the Trump administration has continued. You see how something that Obama started, something that was positive, right? 
how he says that he's proud to say that the Trump administration has continued. This was something that was already put in place. So now you want to try to shift some of the credit to the Trump administration. You see the slick talk that these people have. This is really laughable to me, very laughable. Like I said, you have to laugh to keep from crying. So Obama put something in place in Africa and old Trump decides, oh, we'll, we'll let that continue. So he gets credit for that. Give me a break. Okay, let's continue. So there's a lot more that we can do there, uh, both as a government with development finance uh, institutions, but also very much the private sector finding the right opportunities there to invest in Africa. Well, okay, so you're finding opportunities. There you have it. It's all about opportunities. So why do you want to say that Russia and China investments in Africa pose a threat to you? Okay, we're talking about business, right? So you want to find um, it, um, um, in the private sector, you want to find opportunities. What is an opportunity? It's something that's going to benefit you. No talk of benefiting the people of Africa. Although you want to ride on something that Obama did, the Power Africa Initiative, and then real quickly, just mention him real quickly, but shift to Donald Trump and how you are so proud to announce how he continues something, a good work that was established. Mm, mm, mm. Let's continue. So we showed this map. I don't know if we can put it up again, but have we missed the boat? Because it's been, I think, in the last decade that China has grabbed that top trading partner spot. <laughs> These people are so funny. Listen, she says, have we missed the boat? Okay, so listen, looking at this map here, and if I remember, I may try to put it on the screen. I may not because, you know, all of the editing that's involved. What I may do to make things simpler is leave a link to this video so that you can see the map. But uh, she's asking if they've missed the boat. And then she talks about how in the past 10 years, China has made a mark on that map. Most of it is yellow, which re represents China. And then the green represents both China and Russia. And so that map is just boom, China and Russia. And there are just very small dots. Okay, very, very minute other sections to where um, it's gray, in, in which I guess that represents the West or other people because China and Russia are dominating right now, right? And so she's wondering if they've missed the boat. So what have you all been doing in the past 10 years? Calling uh, the countries and regions of Africa SHIT holes? Maybe that's what you've been doing, you see? But um, anyway, I'm going to continue. But as you listen to this nonsense, these people are literally fighting over their piece of the pie of Africa because African leaders, and I do understand that if you don't do what these people want, that they will take you out. They will paint you out to be some monster and then they will justify going in there and assassinating you. I understand that. That is the, that is the truth. Prove us wrong. What place have you all been able to go to and establish peace and harmony? Point to one place, and I'm not talking about other Western nations, okay? I'm talking about other nations. Where have you gone in and established peace and harmony? What people have you been able to go and do that with that you're not fighting with or have some type of conflict? Now, don't talk about your allies where you have put puppets in place, okay? I'm talking about regions where you have gone and established peace and harmony. And I'm gonna give you 400 years. Let's go back 400 years. Where have you done that? Let me continue. And what I find interesting about you people before I continue is you will come on our channels and when we're pointing out obvious things that you cannot deny, you revert to name calling because that's all you have in your defense. You don't have any historical facts to back up anything that you have done that have been of a peaceful nature. Everything you do is rule, ruling with a rod of iron, going in with brute force to overtake, overthrow, colonize, all of that. But you don't want to talk about that. You want to point out all of the infractions. Everyone else's infractions pale in comparison to what you've done all over this planet. Many of you know that, like one viewer, who sends messages to us from time, time to time, they know that. 
So that leads me to believe that many of you know this, but you always have to deflect to make it seem like everybody else, <clears throat> like everybody else are the monsters and you all are somehow the innocent victims who are just so misunderstood. Let me continue. With Africa, the yellow parts of this map are all China. Um, are we that far behind? Can we get in there? What will it take? <laughs> she said, can we get in there? What will it take? Oh my goodness. So it is very obvious that you don't care about the people. Okay. Why don't y'all just be honest and say, look, we don't care about y'all. We just want to get in there. What will it take for us to get in there? What kind of maneuvering tricks can we do to get in there? Why don't you just be honest, okay? You always want to try to pretend like everybody else is out to get you, but you have gotten everybody else. Come on now. China is in there in a big way. Uh, they've invested in a lot of infrastructure, whether it's roads or uh, buildings or airports. Uh, they've invested a lot in extractive industries, taking minerals and oil out of the continent. I think what the U.S. can do is to invest in building capacity in Africa, and that gives us a lot of goodwill with uh, the people and the governments of the, of the continent. Oh my goodness. So because of everything that China has done, they want to just go in and try to establish goodwill with the people. Give me a break. You could have established goodwill people with, with the people from the get go from Jump Street, but that was never your intention. But what you're basically saying, here's what, it, let me interpret what he's saying here. Let's go in and manipulate and deceive the people and make them think that we want to come in and be their friends and do something nice for them and treat them like poor little puppy dogs that we just love and we just want to help you because yeah, China's doing all of this big stuff. They're establishing your infrastructure, building roads and airports and huge businesses and all of that. And uh, they're making it so that things are more attainable, maybe. But what we're going to do, we want to come in and be your friend. We want to come in and help you. We want to establish some type of rapport with the people. Get real. You know you don't care about the people. You don't care if they live or die. Master manipulator here speaking. And as I look into his eyes, I can see the coldness and the deadness. He doesn't have not one drip or ounce of love for the people of Africa. I can assure you that. But unfortunately... There are people of Africa who would look at this very clip, look in his eyes and say, oh, he wants to help us. He's so nice. He's so kind. He want to come in and help us and be our friend. Let me continue on. Uh, you know, we're not just there to take extractive industries out of the extractive uh, resources out of the continent. We can be there to invest in human capital and human resources in the continent and, and therefore have greater influence there as well. <laughs> There's a so he's saying he's trying to his last selling point is that we're not just there to take or extract resources out of Af Africa, but we want to be there to help the people as well and, and develop human resources. Give me a break. Now, unfortunately, there are tons and tons of our people on the continent and here in the U.S. and in the four corners of the earth who would hear this and believe this man just because he said it. Just because he said it, they would believe him. Well, at least they tried. Mm, mm, mm. At least Massa tried. They said they wanted to help us because China's just got such a stronghold here, but they want to come in and help the peoples. I'm sorry, family. I'm sorry. I know some of you might be offended by the way I'm explaining this, but the scripture, even the scripture says that my people are sottish. Sottish means stupid. To do that which is good, they don't know how to do that. But to do that which is evil, they know how to do that very well. It is what it is. And this is what we see all around the globe. Our people being sottish on the continent of Africa. We continue to see the leaders selling out the people. And then we continue to see some of the people def defending the sellouts and def defending those who are um, just coming in there taking over. Now, that's not all of the people because there are a lot of people on the continent who have their eyes and ears open and they know exactly what's going on, but they feel powerless to do anything about it. But as long as you have leaders who are in place who are going to allow these foreigners to come in and just do what they're doing, what can the people do? If the people try to uh, stand against it, you have your own African militias who are put in place by these leaders who will go in and give you another um, version of uh, Rwanda. 
we continue to see many conflicts on the continent of Africa as well that are usually the people agreeing with the governments who have been infiltrated by outsiders to do something that's going to harm the people. It is what it is. And for you Africans who continue to come on here on this channel and tell us how wrong we are and that we don't know what we're talking about and that we're against the people. If you listen and if you understand, I am for the people. I'm not against the people. I am against wicked leadership who hurts the people and allow others from the outside to hurt the people as well. The thing is, you don't want us to point to the obvious, okay? We need to point to the ob obvious so that people, our people, and the people on the continent could literally have a voice to, to really show what is happening. And I know that every African country is different. Some countries are faring a lot better than others, but you do have your poor populations all over the continent. And they are being dominated by wicked leaders and outsiders who care nothing for the people. So save me all of the drama in the comment section because for each of you, who come and try to rebuke us for what we say about Africa, there are other Africans in the comment section and who send us private messages and messages on Facebook who are telling the truth. They know what's going on. They know how the leaders have sold out the people. Okay, it is what it is. And now you have America who is feeling threatened. Let me get back to that. For them to say Russia and China investments in Africa pose new threats to the U.S., I hate that type of language because that's the type of language that's so very inflammatory. It's over the top and it tries to make it seem like someone is an imminent threat when they are not. Their biggest fear is the fact that China has gotten in there and they're covering the whole map and they're feeling like, um, have we missed the boat? That's what it's all about. Have we missed the opportunity to take advantage of Africa? That's really what she's trying to say without saying it. But that's what it all boils down to. Have they missed the boat on taking advantage of Africa? Now, we can say, hope and pray all we want that uh, the leaders of Africa would wake up and stop allowing this kind of nonsense. But I, I don't have any hope or faith in that happening as long as they are padding their pockets. I'm talking about the African leaders. As long as their pockets are being padded with millions and billions of dollars to let these foreign nationals in to come and take over. And as long as their families are straight, they don't care about the people. As long as that's happening, it's going to take divine intervention to undo what's being done on the continent of Africa because these greedy leaders... They care about themselves and their families. And if that means selling out the rest of the population, that's what they are doing. It is what it is. And with that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also comment, share, like, and subscribe.